Well, let's see here. I might not be Morgan Freeman, but this is... Classic Gamer Review. Yeah, we all know and love Home Alone. The classic story of a boy whose parents can't keep a leash on their kid. So the game I'm playing today is Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Not only did Kevin get lost in New York, but it also seems that he got lost in finding a good game. So right away, the game starts and... Oh boy, credits. That's the first thing a kid wants to see when they buy a Super Nintendo game. You're then greeted with a cutscene that I must say is very awkward. Marvin and Harry awkwardly stare at you as if they're talking to you. But now you get to finally play the game. You start up at... What the fuck? Getting strangled by a man in the first 5 seconds of the game is not how you start a game. It should be in the first 10 minutes. So unless if you go into the game with a mindset of, I'm gonna get strangled by a man, then you're gonna lose one of your lives. But hey, who wouldn't go into a game thinking that? For the people who don't see it coming, this is cheap. Especially in a game that I found out gives you no continues. It's also unfair though, because the rules and objectives of the game are never really even made clear. And it really shows throughout most of the game. Why can't I go up this elevator? Why do I have to push the elevator button so many times? I guess I shouldn't be too shocked that the elevators hate me though, because everything in the game wants you dead, and just like the objectives of the game, the enemies aren't even made clear. Suitcases and vacuum cleaners? Really? Be it the old ladies at the store, the maids, which, by the way, I don't give a flying fuck if you like your job or not, but don't take it out on me, they all want you dead! If a maid ever did that to me, I'd get her ass fired. Kevin is literally praying for his life. On the other hand, if a maid ever let me do this... One of the more creepier things about the game is this. This old man. As if it's not enough to just look suspicious, he's... There's no easy way to say this, but... He's out to rape you. He flips you upside down and forces you to suck his cock. You die from eating too much dick. I wish I was kidding, but he even goes as far as to slow down when the elevator approaches in case, you know, a cop was in there. But once he sees no one's in there, oh boy does he go to town on you! At least you're given a decent amount of stuff to protect yourself with. But I do have one question. When you shoot an enemy with a BB gun and stun them, why is it safe to run past them? More so, why did they develop the game this way? I've been taught the whole game to not get hit by them, but now I have to walk by them? So then you take an elevator ride from hell. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's just a regular old boy in an elevator ride. Try not to get your head fucking cut off as you face the first boss whose health is represented by his clothing. I don't know, call me crazy, but I'm seeing a recurring theme here. Then more odd cutscenes. But don't think level 2 makes more sense, because I don't remember any of this shit happening in the movie. Everything from the bomb throwing bonds to the old lady living in the fucking sewer isn't ringing a bell to me. I guess I didn't watch the uncut version, I don't know. But you do get to shoot bats in the face with a fucking fist shooting rocket launcher! So this level gets my stamp of approval. Remember that reoccurring theme I was talking about? Well, if you haven't guessed it, it's rape. And the third level, Uncle's House, doesn't really do anything to stray from that theme either. You still have full grown men chasing little boys. No, we are not doing that joke again. The point of this level is to kill Marv and Harry in very creative ways. Sometimes that means scorching them alive or dropping a bowling ball on their head. Whatever gets you the keys that make you advance. Wait, didn't I just see you? The next and final level of this short game has you running away from Harry and Marv. Well, at least one of them. Harry kinda just sits there. I don't like this part at all, mainly because nothing makes sense, here more than ever. I could get past the moving suitcases, but moving trash cans is where I draw the fucking line. So after dodging everything that wants you dead, you get to a Christmas tree. And prepare to battle to the death. And when I say battle, I really mean more of a battle with the controls. Marv and Harry are difficult, yes, but actually getting to the top of the tree to summon Pigeon Bitch? 
is more difficult than it should be. It's also annoying because by this point in the game, you were so fucking fed up with the annoying jumping sound. After you kill the two dumbasses, the game goes into what I can only assume is the second coming of Jesus Christ, as the animals of the land lift you up and away. That didn't happen in the movie! Overall, however, this game isn't that bad, but it certainly isn't good. <laughs> Well, let's see here. Well, let's see here. I may not be Morgan Freeman, but this is Classic Gamer Reviews. So then you take an elevated ride from hell.